Hello everyone, I'm Yuxuan Liang from National University of Singapore. Glad to be here to present our work in the Triple W21. As its title suggests, we aim to study the problem of fine grain urban flow prediction. Let me first briefly introduce the background of this problem. Accurately forecasting urban flows such as predicting the total crowd flows entering or leaving each location of a city plays an essential role in smart city efforts. It can provide insights to the government for traffic management, risk assessment, as well as the decision making. Urban flow prediction benefits smart cities in many aspects. However, a critical prerequisite is having fine current knowledge of that city. Acquiring the traffic in a small area of interest can help allocate police resources more precisely, while knowing that the information at a district level is less useful. For example, compared to Figure A, Figure B with 128 by 128 resolution encourages better decision making. Therefore, uh, we present the first attempt to predict fine grain urban flows in this study. When increasing the granularity, the distance between two specific grid cells will also increase. Thus, it becomes far more important to capture regional dependencies on a global scale in such fine grain settings. However, existing methods are inefficient to uh, capture such global spatial dependencies. Most of the previous uh, studies like STResNet employ convolutional neural networks to capture information locally, but to capture the global spatial dependencies, they have to stack many layers to increase the receptive field of the network, as illustrated in this figure. This is very uh, inefficient since the relationship between uh, distant regions can only be captured by a near top layer with a sufficiently large receptive fields. Another direction is to uh, learn the long range spatial dependencies directly. Uh, for example, DeepSTM Plus attempts to capture the global spatial dependencies in every layer using a REST Plus structure which explicitly models all pairwise relationship between uh, different regions. However, a single layer of REST plus requires O n square parameters, where n is the number of grid cells. So if the granularity increases, it will induce much more parameters. To address this issue, we devised a spatial-temporal relation network that jointly considers the spatial-temporal and uh, external relations. We stratify the whole process into two components. The first one is a backbone network for learning representation for each uh, grid cell. And the second one is a global relation module that captures the global spatial dependencies in a more economical way compared to existing arts. We have conducted extensive uh, experiments to show the effectiveness of our approach. The experimental result shows that our approach reduces the prediction errors by 7% to 11% while using less than 1% parameters uh, in SOTA method. After introducing um, our contributions, we will describe the framework of SDIN consisting of two major stages. Uh, including data preparation and model learning. In the first stage, uh, we first select the key timestamp, uh, including closeness, period, and trend to create the flow inputs. We also fetch the context of external factors and the uh, land functions. In the second stage, the prepared uh, data are fed to learn the model following a local to global paradigm. We first embed the temporal sequences as well as the external factors, and then take them as the input of the backbone network for feature extraction within its local receptive field. 
once we obtain the high level features of uh, each globe or uh, each urban grid cell at a local scale we design a glow net structure to capture the global spatial dependencies and generate the final predictions finally uh, we optimize the whole model ways by using a loss function including two parts a mean cut loss for automatic region partition and a mean um, absolute error loss for measuring the prediction errors. Uh, that is uh, the whole procedures of our uh, approach. Recall that both the previous and current state-of-the-art methods use residual blocks to model the spatial dependencies from nearby regions. However, uh, these methods mainly focus on spatial dimension and overlooked the channel-wise information in the feature maps. Uh, therefore, we employ the SENet, that means the squeeze and excitation network, to fuse both spatial and uh, channel-wise information within small receptive fields at each layer. After local feature extraction, the next stage is global relation modeling. Motivated by relation networks seizing relations between objects in images, we devise a global relation module to capture the global spatial dependencies in a more economical way than the previous attempts. The major insight is we do not reason the global dependencies in original grid space, which causes ON square complexity. Instead, as depicted uh, in the right hand figure, uh, we first perform a conversion from grid space to region space, and then infer the regional correlations globally by a message passing scheme. And finally, we project the uh, region features back to the grid space so we can obtain the global aware grid uh, features. In a nutshell, um, our GlowNet is composed of four major steps. I will describe them one by one. The first step of GlowNet is region partition, where the core problem now is how to generate the assignment matrix B. In this component, each region consists of many grid cells and we use a matrix B to denote such assignments. Although we can perform a static uh, region segmentation, for example, based on the road networks, it fails to capture the highly dynamic uh, traffic conditions. To tackle this problem, we compute the assignment matrix based on the high-level representation of grid cells by means of a feedforward neural networks delta. Inspired by the mean cut theory that aims at partitioning nodes into disjoint uh, subsets by removing the minimum volume of edges, we view each region as a cluster containing many grid cells and regularizing the assignment matrix by using a new loss called mean cut loss. Minimizing the first term of mean cut loss enforces strongly connected uh, grid cells to be grouped into the same region, while the other term LO encourages the assignment to be orthogonal and the regions to be of similar size. We have also shown an example of the segmentation results at different training steps uh, at the right hand side. And the second step is to do the uh, space conversion. Uh, given the um, grid cell features and the assignment matrix, we convert those grid-based embeddings to their regional counterparts that are more friendly to capture global dependencies. Moreover, uh, we need to find the connectivity between these regions. Uh, instead of using very complex and time-consuming operations, we implement the space conversion by these two equations where we generate the features of each region by directly aggregating the features of the corresponding grid cells that belong into this uh, region. After space conversion, we obtain a new graph where each node denotes an irregular region and each edge models the interaction among two regions. To, op uh, to model the inter-region relationship, um, a natural idea is to use graph convolutional networks to perform message passing between these regions based on the adjacency matrix. In this way, the regional information are passed through the graph to generate a global aware uh, representation for each region. 
Once we obtain the global aware feature from the region space, the next step is to project them back to the original space. Similar to the step of uh, space conversion, we can also use an assignment matrix uh, for the reverse projection. Instead of using extra operations uh, and introducing additional overheads, we reuse the uh, assignment matrix to project the region features back to the grid cell features by a linear combination, uh, as this uh, equation show. To evaluate the effectiveness of our model, we conduct extensive experiments over to real-world datasets. Uh, as we can see, um, Taxi Beijing Plus covers 128 by 128 grid cells, while Happy Valley possesses uh, 50 by 100 grid cells, uh, which are with much higher spatial resolutions than conventional datasets such as Taxi Beijing. On the first dataset, STR and outperforms the state-of-the-art method by average 8% to 11% in terms of uh, mean absolute error over the four time periods while using much fewer parameters. Uh, specifically, STR only have um, 0 0.88 uh, megabyte parameters, while DeepSTM Plus requires uh, 0 0.27 uh, gigabyte uh, parameters. Besides the model comparison, we also conduct ablation study to show the effect of the uh, GlowNet module. It can be seen in this table that the integration of GlowNet improves the model performance from 1.93 uh, to 1.82, while only using very few extra parameters. The reason uh, is that uh, GlowNet enables our model to capture the global spatial dependencies more efficiently. We also compare our main card based dynamic partition with the static road network based partition, denoted as STR without dynamic. The improvement of STR against without dynamic can demonstrate the importance of considering real-time traffic information and network topology for region partition. At last, we conduct a hyperparameter study to test its uh, sensitivity. There are two major hyperparameters in this module, the number of regions M and the parameters alpha for uh, valency, uh, MAE loss, and the mean card loss. As shown in the uh, figure at the uh, left button, uh, the performance degrades when m is small, such as 10 and 50, since it is very hard to aggregate uh, over 10,000 grid cells uh, into such few uh, regions. We also notice that uh, increasing m does not give significant gain and uh, instead slow down the training phase. Uh, thus, we select m equals to 100 in our STM as the default setting. To study the effects of alpha, we try different scales of this uh, trade-off parameter. Uh, we can achieve the lowest MAE when alpha equals to 0 0.001. In addition to taxi Beijing dataset, uh, our approach also achieves the state-of-the-art performance on the Hypervalley dataset, uh, which can verify its good uh, generalization ability. In summary, we present the first attempt to predict the fine grain number flows in this study. Our approach follows a local to global paradigm, which not only achieves the state of the art performance over two datasets, uh, and also uh, with very good uh, scalability and lightweight property. To further verify its practicality, we also deploy a cloud based system called UrbanFlow for monitoring and forecasting uh, urban flows in Beijing. Specifically, uh, it supports us to predict the urban flow at a uh, fine grain level uh, by using our STRN as the backrow model. A user can click any grid cell on the interface to see the flow details, including the historical ground truth as well as the previous and future prediction results. Moreover, users can watch the movie style heat maps by clicking the play button uh, at the button left of the main interface. That's all from this presentation. Thanks much for your attention.